finished. Almost. Yeah. Can I go? Mm. Go! Mm -hmm. I, I went.
Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. My name is Apostle Joseph Helen. I'm coming to you live from Nanyuki, Kenya. It's a different town altogether. We are at the foot of uh, the highest mountain in Kenya. It's called Mount Kenya. And uh, the Lord is wonderful, so good. We enjoyed ourselves, scenic views. We are on holiday, a working preaching holiday. Glory to Jesus. And I'm just so glad to have every single one of you online. It's going to be a great, great session today. And this is Trapeza TV, the table of heavenly contents, where your life will be transformed, your life will be chained by use of the word of God. You're blessed indeed. And the apostle of love is sending love your way. I can see... Jathan Kenneth Jiguna saying, whoa, how wonderful. What with surprise <laughs> visit in that area. <laughs> Glory to God. We're on holiday. Hallelujah. The Lord is helping us out. We are still enjoying the festive season. I hope your Christmas has been wonderful. Hope you've eaten chicken, turkey, goat, lamb, pork, pork <laughs> name it. All the things that people like to eat. I know some people like to eat crocodiles too. And that's okay. The Bible says nothing is to be rejected if it's been taken after Thanksgiving because it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer. First Timothy 4 verse 4. Hallelujah. I can see Dennis is online. God bless you. Love you so much. Rita Kobusinje is saying, Greetings from Uganda. Love you so much. Please invite your friends. Tell them Apostle Joseph Helen is online. And tell them that your life is going to be transformed. I'm here with my wonderful winning team, Mr. Nzomo, on the control panel, handling the cameras and the softwares, and Mr. Bula, creative director, is somewhere enjoying himself. Our babies, Dero and Miss Gub, are also somewhere. I can see Dero is, Miss Gub is, and Dero, they're seated on the stairs with their phones, tweaking things. They love technology, these ones. And my beautiful wife is somewhere with her signature smile, just enjoying herself. Things are so beautiful for her. By the way, this was her initiative. She decided to take us all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, some very many miles. How many kilometers is it from Nairobi? 120. About 120 kilometers from Nairobi. And we are in a town or city. So it should be, it should be, maybe. Yeah, uh, it's not reached the international city status, but it's a, a civilization of its own, you know, complete with a, a beautiful air strip. And I'm telling you, there's so much that goes on here, just so beautiful. So we thank God. I want to take you straight to the Word of God, and I want to talk to you about how to make money. And if you want to make money, go back to the beginning. If you want to fix anything that's gone wrong, go back to the beginning. If you want to repair anything, go back to the beginning. You know, for us as musical people, uh, if you have a guitar, for example, you go back to the basics. It's called tuning. You have to ensure that the strings of your guitar are sounding correctly if the rest of your music performance is to be fine. So in business, the same thing happens. In work or whatever you do to earn your income, the same thing happens. Go back to the beginning. If you go back to the beginning, you'll find out where things went wrong and you can rectify them. You know, sometimes people just wake up and they say, I don't have money, I don't have money. What am I going to do? How am I going to help myself? I don't have any money. Uh, don't, don't get into a panic. Go back to the beginning. Retrace those steps and find out where did you start losing money? Because you had it before. Every single human being has had money at some point. In fact, a lot of money at some point. Just ask yourself, where did it go? Where did you lose it? Is it overspending? For example, it's been Christmas. Some people are just spending money on food and drinks. And you're just spending so much money. You see, you can still have fun without having to spend so much. Always have this wisdom. Go for best for less. Go for best for less. Always go for best for less. There's a big problem in Africa. This is where if somebody has $1,000, they spend all of it. They'll spend all of it on clothes, on shoes, and then food. And that's not the right thing to do. So I want to take you through scriptures so that you get to learn 
how to be afloat financially, especially as the new year approaches. This is the time for you to plan how you're going to spend and it's also the time for you to find out whether your spending habits are the type that will make you rich or the type that will make you poor. So let's look at how God operates. God created the heavens and the earth, you know, many, many years ago, probably billions of years ago. And then there was a certain creature called Lucifer, which means light, the one that produces light, the one from whose body light emanates, and the one from whose words light emanates. And this creature, or angel, a cherub, and remember cherubs have eyes all over. They have a number of wings, four wings actually, and on their wings there are eyes all over. Sometimes they don't appear as if they have wings, but they do have four wings. If you read properly, especially the book of Ezekiel, you'll find they're described there. And this guy was extremely intelligent, extremely wise, and he had musical instruments incorporated into his body. So when he lifted his wings, you'd hear the most amazing sounds. Not only was he a good singer, in other words, he produced beautiful musical sounds with his voice, but his entire body produced like symphonic music, mellifluous, sweet to the ear, amazing sound. So whenever he appeared, you heard music sound. And his voice was also musical. And he had the wisdom that God gave him to rule the universe. And he operated from the earth. Uh, but this guy became proud because he got into business. You know, God wants us to do business. I've taught you this many times. In the book of Luke chapter 19, where he says, occupy until I return. That means do business until I return. So the idea of making money is actually God's idea. The idea of working so that you can create income is actually God's idea. The idea of making profit is God's idea. And Lucifer, if you read the book of Ezekiel, verse two, chapter 28 and Isaiah 14, if you read those two, you'll find how he's described. In one case, he's referred to as uh, Tyrus, that particular epithet or another name. Yeah, you know, Jesus has an epithet called Christ. So Lucifer was also called King Tyrus. And he had merchandise and great trading abilities and he made lots of money. Uh, you know, his body was made of precious metals. He himself was collateral in itself. He was rich and prosperous. And every time he went before the throne of God, he never saw anything except a lamb. And he thought, ah, I'm going to arise to the north. I'm going to be like the Most High. It looks like this particular place doesn't have anybody seated with as much grandeur and as much authority as me. Just a lamb. And that caused him to feel that it was his time to rise to the north and sit upon that throne. And the Bible says he was chased away from heaven. How thou art fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning and he was sent to the side of the pit. Now the thing about God is that when he gives you a gift, he never takes it away. So Lucifer still has all those abilities he had before, except that he lacks in the presence of God, in which case he no longer has the wisdom of God. That's why the Bible says, had he known, he would not have crucified Jesus. He thought that by crucifying Jesus was destroying him, but by crucifying Jesus, salvation came to the world. If he knew, if he had the wisdom, he would not have done it. If Lucifer knew that you were going to get saved, he would have stopped you from going to church. But he got shocked after you were saved. If Lucifer knew that you are going to connect to a man of God, a woman of God, who can transform your life, he would have stopped you. But he doesn't know everything because he's no longer connected to God. Though he still has quite some wisdom and he still has quite some wealth. Look at how he gives it to the kings of the world, those who worship him. He gives them something. Yeah? He gives them authority, positions. Most governments are under the devil, by the way. And that's why the Bible says the government shall be upon our shoulders. We are the ones to carry the government, those who have the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So, Lucifer is knocked down from heaven to the site of the north. He went to the north. Heaven is situated to the north. Zion is situated at the north. I have taught this before, and I don't want to go into those details right now, because I want to teach you how to go back to the beginning to fix your finances. So, Lucifer is sent back, you know, crashing onto the very earth, this headquarters. And when he crashed onto the earth, he messed everything up. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning. Okay? 
the very first thing God did. God pre-existed himself. Before he was called God, he existed. That's why we worship him. He's an amazing, an amazing God. Before he was called Elohim, that's a name that's given by those who exist. But the name Jehovah means that the self-existing one, the one that exists within, I like the way um, Prophet Juba Edu puts it, with, with, within the circumference of himself. Yeah? He pre-existed himself. He pre-existed his name. And the Bible says in the beginning, God, the word is Elohim, which is the plural name of God. So you should say in the beginning, God's created the heavens and the earth. That means it was the word. Yeah. And then there was the father and then there was the spirit. Yeah. So if you read the book of John chapter one, I will just get back to Genesis chapter one. John chapter one from verse one. If you read, then you'll understand. The Bible says in the beginning, you see that in the beginning, uh, the origin, same, same word, arche, of course, in, in Greek. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. There are three people mentioned here. In the beginning was the word, and then this word is with God, number two, and the word is God, number three. So the word is Jesus. Okay, The power that causes the word to operate is the spirit. The source of the word is God. So God speaks and when you hear that word, that one is called Jesus. The word that operates in you and begins to work is the Holy Spirit. But we thank God that in the beginning it, it was just the word. But right now he has a body. Jesus has a body. And having a body enables a spirit to rule and reign. So the fact that you have a body enables you to rule and reign on earth. So don't despise your body because your body is what gives you power to rule and reign. And to rule and reign on earth you not only need words, you also need money. For the Bible says money answers all things. Ecclesiastes 19, money answers all things. So we go back to Genesis chapter 1 and the Bible says, uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The same thing, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, John chapter 1, this, uh, all things were made by him. He made all things. All things became into existence by him. Ginomai, to come into existence. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's without the word, okay? Without the word was not anything made that was made. So what's business? It's a set of words that are skillfully used to create money. A set of words skillfully used to create money. That's business, yeah? What's, what's income? A set of words skillfully used to produce money. So the Bible says without him was not anything made that was made. Verse for in him was life. And the life was the light of men. In that word, Jesus was life. And that life is the light of men. The light of men. That word is the light of men. Light is what gives you direction. Light is what gives you insight. Light is what enables you to know what to do. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Ah, hallelujah. I can see and I see. Glory to Jesus. She says, wow, enjoy yourself. Thank you so much, my dear. You're just amazing. Yeah. By the way, I love you guys, all right? Before this year ends, I need you to know there's an apostle that loves you. Glory to Jesus. There's an apostle that loves you tremendously. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, there is nothing that was made. Uh, without him was not anything made that was made. So you can't make anything without words. So why is there confusion in your life? Because the words you've been speaking are words of confusion. Why is there confusion in your finances? Because you confuse the spiritual realm by giving contradictory statements all the time. One moment you say, I'm broke. The next moment you say, ah, oh, I have a little money. The next moment you say, oh, we are barely making it. We are just etching, you know, we're just, we're just trying to, to eke out a living. There, there's this minimalistic approach to life that most people engage in. They, they tend to think that it's humble to talk small. That it's humble to say, oh, they even say we are in our humble abode. <laughs> yeah, what is humility? Humility is power under control. Wow, glory to God. Humility is not living in misery or a miserly life. Humility is power under control. Ron Amwaka says, Blessing to you, man of God. Love you, Papa. Love you too, my dear. Just amazing. So, so glad to have you with us. Hallelujah. So, words will create where you are. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It was perfect. There was no problem whatsoever. 
There was no problem with the heavens and the earth until Lucifer in his pride destroyed things. He was greedy. He was not satisfied with the fact that he covered the throne of God. He's the cherub that covers. He's the one that covered the throne of God. You know, if you read the Bible, you find so much written about this Lucifer guy. Yeah? Look, if you read the book of Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. That's how, when he wanted to go to the north to take over because he looked and saw the lamb as if he was slain. That's the one that was seated on the throne. So a little lamb, as if he was slain, is the one that has been giving me instructions all this time. I think I, could, I can do better. There is music all over my body. I look so beautiful. I'm made as a glorious one. I rule the universe. Uh, every time the wind blows, you need to know the wind is actually the word of God. Every time the wind blows, there's music that comes out of me and everybody bows. All the, the, the Adams that were created before, there was an Adam before Adam. But I don't want to go into that. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Chalom says, says Apostle and others are missing to hear your, your sermons from God. Which TV channel can we get you? This is called Trapeza TV. Things have changed nowadays. <laughs> Internet is much stronger than, than the normal um, TV stations. All right? That's why all TV stations have YouTube and Facebook. You understand? So the futuristic person does TV online. It's much more powerful uh, and much more effective than an actual TV as we know it in the traditional setting, okay? So this is the TV channel. And please go to my YouTube channel as well, Apostle Joseph Hello. You'll find so many teachings there. You see, the thing about TV is that you can only find me when I'm online. But the beautiful thing about social media is that even after I'm offline, when I'm no longer preaching or teaching, you can watch and rewatch and rewatch, okay? So that's the better way to approach uh, preaching the gospel. But God bless you. Thank you so much for your beautiful and kind words. So, Isaiah 14, 12. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Lucifer, son of the morning. Wow, a beautiful name. Yeah, Lu Lucifer, Helel. Okay, Helel. That is in, he in Hebrew, Helel, Lucifer. Um, it means light bearer, the one that carries light. And he was also called the son of the morning, son of the dawn. Yeah, you know, that's, you know Jesus also called the morning star. So this guy was high. He was way up there. And the Bible says, you are cut down to the ground, you who did weaken the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That means above the angels of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sights of the north. That's called Zion. This is a place where we are seated in Christ in the heavenly places. In Ephesians 1 verse 6. Where we are seated right now, that's where the devil Lucifer wanted to sit. And he was kicked out of it. Yeah. Psalm 48 verse 2 says, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Now we are the Zion of God and Lucifer wanted exactly what we have right now. That's why he hates you. You get that? He hates you because you've got what he had. Okay. And the Bible says, I hope you got that. Um, Psalm 48 verse 2. Beautiful for situation. Uh, beautifully situated. Yeah. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. That Mount Zion is where we are right now. It's called the heavenly Jerusalem. It's also in your heart, okay? So Lucifer wanted to go there. And he says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He wanted to be the God to be worshipped. That's why he causes people to worship him even now. You see, the Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. Any moment you start worshipping money, you're worshipping Lucifer. You're worshipping... The devil. By the way, he's no longer called Lucifer. Now he's called Satan. That means an opposer, the one that opposes all good things. Or the devil, that means a uh, culminator or a uh, slanderer, a traducer, one who speaks negative things about people. Please don't join him in the ministry of saying bad things about people. Okay? Don't let the devil deceive you to the extent that you start speaking his language, which is slandering people, tearing people down. It's called the Dog and Pigs Ministries International. The Bible says, don't give your precious things to the dogs and the pigs, that they will trump them underfoot and then tear you down. So you also need to be careful, even with your financial ideas. There are certain people that are in the Dogs and Pigs Ministries, and the moment they hear that you're about to do something great, they tear you down. They discourage you. They tell you it's not going to work. 
so and so tried it my uncle tried it never worked you know your business is not going to work anything you do shall prosper the bible says even if you decide that yours is to sell firewood cutting firewood and selling you can still be a millionaire because whatsoever you do shall prosper if you put your hand to it put your heart to it but let's go back to the beginning so this is the lucifer we're talking about he was brought down to hell to the sight of the pit okay now i don't want to go into the into greater details talking about lucifer really but let me read for you uh, ezekiel 28 verse 12 just to to make a few things uh, a few things clear yeah uh, from verse 12 of Ezekiel, 12, Ezekiel 28, it says, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Now, that's, uh, that's his epithet, a new, another name for Satan. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, You seal up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. That was Lucifer. You have been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold. That's a rich guy. That's money. Okay. The workmanship of your tablets and of your pipes was prepared in you the day you were created. You are the anointed herub. The word anointed there is mimshak. Another thing you need to know in business. Mimshak means spreading out, economy of scale. Doing one thing and then replicating it. It's like the way they started Coca-Cola. And when they started Coca-Cola during the Second World War, Every place where the American soldiers went, they went with Coca-Cola to remind them of their country. And then they decided to spread Coca-Cola. So every place where they went, it was difficult carrying Coca-Cola bottles or carrying Coca-Cola tanks for the, the soldiers to drink. So every place where the soldiers were, they created a, an industry that would use, of course, their secret formula to create coca-cola there that's how coca-cola spread all over so that ability for a company to spread is what we call mimshak m-i-m-s-h-a-c-h mimshak okay mimshak ability to spread and lucifer had that ability that's why that things of the devil spread very very fast because he has that anointing but since we are seated at the north Mount Zion, Psalm 48 verse 2, the place that Lucifer really desired, then you have greater power of Mimshak than Satan. Wonderful. And he's under your foot. So you can spread much more than the devil. You can spread much more than the world. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Because you have greater power and greater anointing to spread. The Bible says you are the anointed Herub. He was a Herub that had power to spread. The anointed Herub that covers, I have set you so. You are upon the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down the midst of the stones. You are perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. Verse 16, the Bible says, this is about Lucifer. By the multitude of your merchandise, they have filled the midst of you with violence and you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before the kings that they may behold you. Okay, so you read that all by yourself and you'll find why Lucifer, when he was cast down, messed up the earth. So we go back to Genesis chapter 1, okay? So Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 2 now. Lucifer has been cast down. In Ezekiel 28, he's been cast down. So verse 2 says, And the earth was without form. Question is, does your business have form? Does your source of income have form? Is there a bit of structure, even if it's handwritten structure? So go back to the beginning as the year starts. Can you go back to your notebook or to your laptop or whatever you use to take notes and put structure to the things you do? Put structure, basic structure. What's my income? What's my expenses? Think like that. What comes in? What goes out? Put a bit of structure. You see, when Lucifer was well, cast out of heaven, he hit the earth, and the earth, which was so well organized, ended up without form. The earth was without form. The Hebrew word is tohu, T-O-H-U, tohu, okay, T-O-H-U, tohu, formless. There's confusion. There's unreality. It's empty. Is there any form of structure in the thing you do? For you to make money, go back to the beginning and put structure to things. How much comes in? Even if you want to say every week, how much comes in every week? And how much do you spend every week? Look at the difference. 
All right. So if you are getting two hundred dollars, let me even just say a hundred dollars a week. You're making that, that might still be quite high to a lot of people, but let's think big, okay? A hundred dollars a week. What are your expenses per week? If your expenses are higher than a hundred, please start cutting things down. Begin by reducing the things that take away money from you, like for example, um, electricity. Switch off lights. That's one way of saving money. Now I've taught you a great teaching last Monday about how you can save money. Yeah, it was a wonderful teaching. Please go back to it and watch it. So switch off electricity. If you don't need it, switch it off. If you're not using a certain room, switch off the light from there. And then this vampire current. Get rid of vampire currents. What are vampire currents? See, every gadget you have, even if it's on sleep mode, still uses electricity. Your sockets, if it is on, it's using electricity. You know, your, your multi-plug, those things that you use for plugging your phones and all those things, they use electricity. So when you're not using them, switch them off from the wall, from the socket itself. You'll find your electricity bill going down. And then use uh, those shower heads that are beneficial for saving electricity. Yeah? Don't, don't boil water from the tank. That really, really takes electricity. And you'll pay so much money. So use those instant shower so that you only use electricity when you're showering and when you stop showering, that's it, it's over. And then switch it off from the wall. Don't leave it red. As long as something is looking red or yellow somewhere, you uh, experience what we call vampire electricity. It is sucking blood out of your electric system and you'll pay lots of money as a result. You see, so if you can do things like that, just reduce the amount of electricity you use. Don't use those instant, those, those immersion heaters. That's what they call. It takes too much power. So you find that you're paying electric power. You're paying so much per week or per month. By the end of the year, you're spending too much on electricity. Bring that down. Now, if you have a car, don't drive everywhere. There are places where you can walk. You know, if the supermarket is not too far from where you live, just walk there and walk back. But there are certain people who feel like, Walking is a sign of poverty. So for them, they have to drive everywhere. They drive to the gate and drive back to the house, you know, if, if they live in a big compound. Yeah? Just to feel rich. You know, we are, I have a car, man. You know, that's, that's poverty mentality. So go back to the beginning. God went back to the beginning and found there was no formal structure. Okay? The Bible says it was Tohu and Bohu. You know, it was form, it was formless and void and empty. Yeah, And the Bible says the darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The whole earth was filled with water. In fact, it was icy. They call it the Ice Age. Glory to God. So there was water all over. There was no form, no structure. There were no streets anymore. The streets that were made of gold, those fiery stones that were made of, you know, that were so expensive, the dam on the toppers, you know, those these precious metals were on the face of the earth. They were all quenched with the fire. And ice covered the entire surface of the earth. And it was all dark and messed up. That's Lucifer's way of doing things. And he wants to infiltrate, infiltrate your life by lying to you. Yeah? Lucifer's the one that makes it hard for you to read the word. He makes it hard for you to worship God. He makes, it, makes you think that Christianity is some backward thing. That's his nature. Because he wants to take your place. Psalm 48 verse 2. On, on the northern side where heaven is found, where we rule and reign from. Okay, so you've got rid of things that waste money, using fuel and just driving anyhow, instead of walking. Save that money, okay? And then, please, every time you buy anything, whether it's a watch or a phone or a laptop, make sure that they're in their best state of repair. Don't be the replacer, be the repairer, okay? We are going back to the beginning so that we can make money. Here, I'm not even talking about you getting a salary raise or getting a better tender or getting better prospects or a new source of income. No, I'm just talking about the income you have right now. You can be rich, you can be extremely rich by knowing how to manage the income you have right now, accounting properly for what you have right now. You see, the fact that you're not yet dead means you eat. 
And the fact that you eat means you spend money to buy food, for example. Yeah? So it means you have some money, even if things have been very difficult. So I'm teaching you to go back to the beginning. Is there a form? Is there a form that you feel? Yeah, let's just start there. Do you feel certain forms that are financially based? This is what came in and this is what's going out. If you are, for example, using mobile money, nowadays they'll give you statements of account. Can you just look and see how much money came in through the mobile system and how much money left through the mobile system? Mike N. Sikilima saying Namaste, God bless you. Love you so much. Yeah. Is there a form in your finances? Can somebody go to your books and read and can they say in this week uh, $100 came in and in this week $150 left. So why is that $50 there? Why are you spending more than what came in? In fact, you need to spend much less, maybe half, 50% still quite a lot. Expenses should be like 30%. But of course, that's not practical if your income is small. It's not really practical. So if we say 50%, 50 to 70% is okay. Yeah? But aim for 50%. Aim to spend only half of what comes in every week. And then the other half, as my wife taught you last time, save. Save. You know, have a place where there's money for contingency. So that if something emerges, an emergency comes, you are able to quickly withdraw from that account to buy things. Save. So you have savings and you have emergency. Of course, and then you also need to give money to support the work of God. That's really why we are giving all this money. So that you can support what God is interested in, which is the saving of the souls of men and women, of course. Glory to God. So, electricity wastage, wasting electricity is waste of money. Wasting fuel is waste of money. You buy so many shoes, but you don't use all of them. Yeah? There are some people who buy clothes and shoes until they run out of fashion before they wear them. You see, you just wasted money there. So, can you monetize these things? Sell them. Even if you're going to lose a little bit, but sell. That's what the wise, the shrewd servant did. My wife taught you last Monday. He went and gave discounts everywhere and then at least recreated cash flow. So if you worked somewhere, we, we are musicians and sometimes we play music in places and you're paid money. Other times they don't pay you money. Yeah, you know, a guy goes bust or broke and doesn't pay you. Look, you can call that fellow and you can tell them, look, instead of the, um, the $200 you're supposed to pay me for the work I did, can you pay me $100? At least it re creates cash flow. The money starts flowing back to you. So avoid waste. Don't waste electricity. Don't waste fear. Don't waste money on too many things that you don't need. You have so many clothes that you don't wear. You see, sell them even at half their price so that there is a source of income coming your way. There's too much furniture in your house some of which are now in the store, broken down. Make sure your things are in a good state of repair. Go back to the beginning. Let there be a form in the way you live. Let your chair stand on four legs, not leaning like this because one has been broken. Repair what you have first. You'll be amazed at how much riches you've got. Go back and repair that computer. It stopped working, now you're looking to buy another one. See, that's how you become broken poor. Repair the computer you already have. Yeah, if you want to upgrade, then sell the one, the old one, so that it brings you money. Or gift it to somebody, because that's one way of ministering to the Lord when you gift, when you give people gifts. Don't just have your computer seated somewhere on top of your cabinet, gathering dust, because you bought a new one. And then your old phone is gathering dust somewhere because you bought a new one. There's somebody who doesn't have a phone who will be quite happy to repair your old phone that's no longer working. You see, it's called having form in your life. Go back to the beginning of things and put structure and form, a formula, a certain form, okay? Let things work around you. Let your tables work. Okay, don't buy a new table before you repair the old one. And if you must buy a new one, then sell the old one. That's the right way to do things, okay? Create cash flow by selling things you don't need so that you have a few chairs that look nice. Your house looks beautiful because you just have a few clean chairs. Nice table. Nice stools. Not everything everywhere. You walk into the store and you have bottles all over. I remember there was a time when uh, we had so many soda bottles. So um, one day my wife just decided to 
um, collect all of them and she went to a supermarket and monetized them. I was almost shocked. At first I was embarrassed, you know. <laughs> what are you going to do with all these bottles? She said, you hold on. We are going to the supermarket and they like to take these bottles back and they'll give us money. I thought, wow, you know, it was so amazing. So she took all these bottles, there were so many put, almost filling the boot of our car. And we took them back to the supermarket and we were given money in exchange and we used that to do shopping that day. Glory to God. That's one way of going back to the beginning. What is it that's occupying space everywhere? Is it useful? For us who are musicians, you'll find cables everywhere, old microphones, unrepaired things, mixers that are sitting there, you know. Sell to somebody. Clean up the store. All right? That's one way of going back to the beginning and you'll make lots of money out of the very things that you have with you. Repair the ones that need to be repaired. Sell the ones that need to be sold. There are certain people who are actually quite happy to buy broken things. Then they can go and repair. How many cars do you have? Do you drive all of them? Is it necessary to have all those cars parked in your yard? If it doesn't affect your business, wonderful, because you also need to enjoy your life. But if you can sell one to create some cash flow, amen, do that. Do that. Sell one car, create some cash flow. Sell and create cash flow. Okay? You know, you can only drive one car at a time. You can't drive two cars. That, okay, now I'm driving this Lamborghini and Ferrari also. So I'm showing people how great I am. Ferra Lambo, Ferra Lambo, you know? And we're just moving on like that. If you have one Lamborghini, you can only drive, it doesn't matter how rich you are. You can only drive one car at a time. The President of the United States drives one beast at a time. There are two beasts, but he can only be found in one beast. Okay? So, it's all right to have one car. There's no competition in this world. If you're living a good, happy life with your family, that's what matters. Okay? There are people who are making it without cars. In fact, right now people are going back to riding bicycles. Do you see? So, don't stress yourself with three cars that need to be filled, four cars that need to be filled, and you don't need them. Sell the two, remain with one. And you'll find your income going up. Okay? Go back to the beginning. Put some form or some formula of expenditure. And you'll find yourself making much more money. Put some form. Ha! Rona, say fair alarm. <laughs> she says amen. <laughs> Oh my goodness. The things you people catch when I talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, that will make you never ever forget this, this message. You remember Farrah Lambo. You know, there's a community where I was born and people are named like that. Yeah. Right now as I'm talking, somebody's already called Corona. You know, <laughs> they name people based on what's happening around them. What big thing happens. If it's elections, you find somebody's called elections, so and so. Yeah. And, and things like that. So I will not be surprised if somebody's called Feralambo, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are already a rich person, but there's too much waste in your life. Avoid waste. Look at your house. Are you using all those utensils? Can you not sell some of them? Huh? They're utensils you no longer use at all. If you don't want to sell them, maybe because there's no market for them, Give them away for free. There is a lady somewhere, there's a gentleman somewhere who doesn't mind using a saucepan that is dented because they don't have any saucepan. So give away, create space, create a flow. Even with your money, it's called cash flow. Money in and money going out. More should come in and less should go out. That's what will be equal to profit. Make much more than what you spend. So, reduce electricity usage and wastage. Your TV uses electricity. You think it's little, but it keeps just piling up. So, when you're not watching TV, go to the socket at the wall and switch off everything. Yeah? Your fridge, of course, um, you don't want things to go bad, so your fridge might remain on. But your microwave should not remain on. Switch off at the socket. Your cooker, switch off at the socket. Switch everything off at the socket to avoid vampire current wastage and then don't use too much fuel all right you don't need too many cars one is enough or two all right drive the car that you need it will also help you with repairs because you have too many vehicles you have to use a lot of money on repairing them and servicing them and all that those are things you need to get rid of you see right now our government in our country doesn't own any vehicles 
they hire all vehicles. Before they used to own vehicles and there, were, there was so much waste. There was a, a yard where vehicles were parked, state of the art vehicles because they couldn't repair them. So right now they hire and use and if they need to be re repaired or they need to be serviced, they take them back to the places where they hire them and then they service and repair and then they keep driving. Their job is just to drive, which is a very wise way of use of resources. So do the same thing as well. In fact, in some cases, using of Uber is cheaper than driving your own car. In, in most cases, especially, uh, my wife and I like to work from home. And when we want to go to the city center, we don't drive there. We get Ubers instead. I think a time is going to come when owning a car will, be a, will, will not be necessary anymore. By the way, in business, a car is a liability. A house too. Okay. So reduce your liabilities. Okay. Increase your assets. And then you'll become rich. Go back to the beginning and put some form. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Imagine I'm not left Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The earth was formless and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. Yeah. And you know, and the spirit of the Lord hovered over the deep. The spirit of the Lord is the word of God. So what word are you going to speak over your situation? Is there a form in your finances? Is there a form in your assets? What things do you own? Do you own things you don't need? Glory to God. And if you don't need it, please sell it. You have too many blankets, too many duvets. They've filled up a whole space, you know. Unless you're a person who is given to uh, accommodating people and hosting people. My wife and I do that. We are ever hosting people. Wherever we are, we are with people. And we just mentioned to you on holiday with our friends, our partners in business. Oh, by the way, let me tell you something. You, you're not going to make it on your own. So if, if you think, oh, I'm just going to do things on my own, you won't go too far. You need people around you. <laughs> you need people around you. You need people around you. Uh, great people always have people around their table. That is a hallmark of greatness. You always have to have people around you. Okay? So if you're accommodating people, of course, you need many beds, you need mattresses, you need duvets, you need bed sheets, pillows, and all the pillowcases. But if... You don't use them. Come on, sell or give away. You'll be amazed at how your money will just shoot up. I'm talking to you about managing what you have right now, not getting new income. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Nathan Kiama says, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Greetings from Pastor Nathan Kiama from Great Light Center, Lanata. God bless you, man of God. So happy to have you with us. As we approach the new year, I want you to increase your income by reducing your expenses. Before we pray for you to get new ideas, new ways of investing and all that, I want you to re reduce, reduce your, your expenses. L let me tell you something about a lot of men of God. A lot of men of God collect tithes and offerings. Um, and that's fine. The Bible says you should because that's how the church runs. Yeah? My wife and I have chosen to do business instead. It's, it's a much more sustainable way of creating money. Yeah? Being... Uh, Stretching out your hands for charity all the time. A time comes when you need to be the source of money, not the one that always asks all the time. So uh, I've seen a lot of men of God collect money from their congregants and then they do missions or crusades and things like that. And then all the money is gone. And then they ask again and all the money is gone. That's a horrible way of doing business. Horrible. Yeah. In fact, a foolish way of doing business. Always taking from the people and spending all of it. Why not? spend a bit of it and invest the rest. If, for example, uh, according to my calculations, if you want to do a minimal, a normal crusade with sound and lights and chairs and security and, and hiring of space and all that, and you're aiming to maybe minister to 2,000 people or something, it might cost you like 30,000 US dollars doing a thing like that. Okay. What if you reduced the number of people? You've collected 30,000 US dollars, but you aim for 500 people instead. So that it's nice and neat. And then $15,000 is invested in something. For example, a lot of men and women of God host other ministers, and they always have to take them to the best hotels. Another stupid thing that people do. Very stupid. Yeah, foolish thing that people do. Your money is always going to hotels. You always go to hotels. Transport the best cars that are hired again. So why not use that amount of money and get a guest house, a little guest house, where your 
your ministers, when they come to minister, stay in. If they don't like it, let them not come. Are you getting that? You cannot always be hosting a guest that's demanding for more and more and more. Okay? So if where you want them to stay is a place they don't want to stay, send them pictures and videos using your phone. Man of God, woman of God, when you come to preach, this is where you'll be staying. Are you comfortable to, to stay in a place like that? If they say no, let them not come. That's called being wise with finances. Until such a time that you can have your own beautiful guest house or hotel where people can stay. But men of God like to pay the existing hotels. All the time. It's foolish. You're already rich, but you, you really don't have money, yet you have money. You see? So cut down expenses. Cut down expenses this coming year. Cut down expenses. Okay? Avoid waste. Sell what you don't need. You have a truck that's sitting there. Oh, I don't have money to repair it. Sell it to somebody at half the price. So that you create income for yourself. Okay? You have so much that you can monetize. Right now, the big word in the business world is monetization. That's, that's the big word. Monetization is all the rage right now. Monetize things. Mon we monetize all manner of things. But you have to avoid waste first. So put form in the things you do. After putting form in the things you do, then speak the right word. Say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be rich in the mighty name of Jesus. Before you buy any new thing, please go back and see if there's anything that is just lying there gathering dust that you need to monetize. You need to sell off. Sell off those duvets. You don't need them anymore. Okay, clean them up, wash them nicely, iron them, you know, if they're bed sheets, and then sell them. Okay, sell that car that's in the yard, sitting there, you know, it's sat there until the tires have turned from black to brown. But somebody will want to use that in his yard, maybe for spare parts or something. Okay, sell that thing. You don't need them. Oh yeah, let people laugh at you saying, oh, nowadays you're broke, you're selling everything. You know, the slander always slanders. That's, that's a, the, the job description of, of the devil, to slander. So if somebody slanders you that you're selling things, you look broke, Nowadays, you don't even drive, you're just walking and all that. You know, walking is good for your health. That's okay. Let the slanderers talk. The devil will always speak, but the Spirit of God talks as well. So, sell what you don't need. I'm helping you. Go back to the beginning for you to make money. That's what God did. He went back to the beginning, found out where there was waste. He recreated things. He reframed things. He restructured his business. After that, he created Adam and Eve, good managers of the business. Oh, they messed up a little bit. Lucifer took over again. Then Jesus came and took over and gave us authority and dominion over all that God has created. You're going to make it in the mighty name of Jesus. Carlos Jeremiah says, Aha, the foolish things. Educators, Papa. <laughs> yeah. How can you collect 30,000 US dollars and you spend all of it? That's foolishness. And then you keep doing that year in, year out. And you're always praying, say, oh, we need financial breakthrough. We need financial breakthrough. I need a minister to come and minister to me to attract finances. But you already have so much money and it goes to hotels, goes to transport, goes to food. All, you know, things that are not investments. You spend money on liabilities all the time. Spend at least 50% and save the other or invest the other 50%. If preachers did this, preachers would be the richest people on the face of the earth. Because they have cash flow every Sunday. Money comes all the time. Mobile money, their bank account details are always on the screen anytime they preach. Anytime they preach. These are our banking details. Yeah? The world is laughing at you, by the way, because it's foolish to act like that. Oh, my God. Ah, this is one of the reasons some preachers don't like me. Because I tell them all these things. Yeah? You don't have to always be begging for money. You have done it for 10 years, 20 years. What's wrong with you? Jesus gave only 10 pounds and when he returned he said I want to see profit and the guy who never made profit was cast into hell Come on Luke 16 Luke 19 go and read he would give money and expect that you invest it the, the guy who didn't invest he said why didn't you put it into a fixed deposit account So that upon my return at least I would get some profit out of what I gave you You know 10 servants each given a pound uh, There are also this also the talent story yeah, one was given five talents, another was given two, another was given one. Jesus expected that what you receive, you invest so that it increases. And one of the best ways to invest is fast, cut down waste. In fact, I don't want to go beyond that. I don't want to start telling you the things to invest in next year. I want to tell you first, cut down waste, reduce waste. 
reduce the electric electricity consumption, reduce fuel consumption by selling that car so that you only have one car. You see, you have reduced your fuel consumption by 50%. Glory to God. That makes you shrewd. Okay? Reduce food wasting. There are people who don't feel comfortable if the if the dinner table is not revolving, you know, there's chicken here and then there's this there, there's that there, there. There's so much food. By the end of it all, they've only eaten a quarter of it. Total waste. Then you find that the dustbin or the waste basket has more food than what entered your stomach. Avoid waste. Serve just enough. And when you finish, go for second helping. Just enough. And finish your food. Let me tell you, you will find yourself saving money by reducing the amount of food you take. Okay? You made tea. Put it in a flask. Took only half of it. Forgot about the other half. By evening it was stale. So you go pouring it into the, uh, what do you call that place where you wash? Sink. Yeah, the sink. Yeah. That place, yeah. <laughs> you go pouring your tea in the sink. This time around it's smelling like a rotten stuff because of milk. Why not just take, prepare a little bit, enjoy, and if you still need more, go and prepare again. Yeah, reduce waste. Okay? Glory to God. I've got to stop there, ladies and gentlemen. You've been so wonderful. Okay? Read the Bible. Read Genesis chapter 1. You find how God recreated everything. Having recreated everything, you put a good manager there. You need to be a good steward of what God has given you. But avoid waste, unnecessary traveling, being stuck in traffic. Yeah? And your car is just consuming fuel. Use Uber instead. That's what my wife and I, that's what we do. We use the smallest car when you're going to to the city center. The one that uses the least amount of fuel so that we achieve the least amount of money. Yeah, we only drive when it is necessary for us to drive. And then we do most of our work at home. Right now, especially because of the lockdown, you can do so much on your laptop. Yeah, it is not wise anymore to invest in office spaces because people are learning to work on their laptops. They are learning to work in their cars. They get their laptop, they connect, you know, to the, the charger and they just work there and then submit their work and go home. Most people work in their beds. Yeah, they don't even change. They're in their pajamas doing the work. Yeah. I was amazed at some point where people were doing a Zoom meeting and some gentleman had not put on his uh, trousers. So, uh, and he was the one who was chairing the meeting. So <laughs> at the end of the meeting, he forgot and his laptop moved a little bit and all the people in the Zoom meeting, the webinar, just saw hairy legs, you know, with a boxer. And you know, sometimes people don't, don't, um, uh, you know, they don't, they don't buy new boxers. And <laughs> so you find it's a bit, it's worn out slightly from where it used to be purple, night looking grayish, you know, things like that. So everybody started laughing at him and was wondering, why is everyone laughing? He was on his phone. In one case in South Sudan, one of the <laughs> members of, of government, I think, in a, a webinar, decided to go to the toilet. So you just see a stream of, of something falling and everyone started wondering what's going on with the honorable member. So he was quickly removed from the Zoom meeting. People are working from home. They don't even need to wear a suit anymore. They wear a shirt, a tie, the rest, nothing. They're in bed and they, they're looking nice because you only see the top part of us. So avoid waste, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm telling you over and over again. Avoid waste. Okay. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are listening to me and you, you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, don't let this year end without giving your life to Jesus. So say this prayer after me. Carlos says he remembers the video. Yeah, I'm just using this to show you people can work at home now. You don't need to pay rent for an office anymore just to look big. Oh, this is my office, mahogany desk and all that. You don't need to do that anymore. Work on your phone. I've done so much, but there's, I've made millions using a phone, a phone like this. Yeah? typing things and doing stuff and doing Word and doing Excel and sending and doing emphasis on my phone. Okay, so avoid waste. Why, why are you paying for that place and you're not using all the space? Move into a smaller house. Let everybody laugh, but you, you are cutting down your rent. Move into a smaller house. Make it look beautiful. Create a beautiful space there that glorifies God. Cut down your rent. The bills must go down. Bring your bills down even to 50% as the year starts. It's possible. Then you'll find yourself 50% richer, promoted. You went back to the beginning and now you have much more money. Glory to God. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I can see a mesh saying true. God bless you, my dear. Love you so much. 
I've got to finish there. So if you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and you rose again for my justification, for my acquittal, for the removal of all my fault. This day I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am born from above. I am saved. Hallelujah. If you've said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Now you are the domicile, the dwelling place of God. All right? So you need to start studying the word of God, hearing the word of God, to start thinking like a child of God. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you so much. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow to teach you on prophecy, how to prophesy and how to handle dreams. All right. This is Apostle Joseph Helen. I've been coming to you on this live broadcast from Nanyuki, Kenya. We are on a holiday, but we must continue preaching the gospel of Jesus to you. From my team on this side of Kenya, from Nanyuki, we say bye-bye. We love you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Enjoy yourself. Bye. Oh, oh, oh.